Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, my name is Brian Van Hook, and I'm Regional Director of the Florida Small Business Development Center at FIU. We're going to let everybody stream in for another minute or two, um, and then we'll start the webinar. Um, and again, this webinar is focused on disaster resili resiliency for your business. Hello, everyone. Um, we're just going to give it another minute or two while everybody uh, streams in. Um, but welcome to the webinar. Thank you for joining us. Okay. And I'd encourage everybody put in the chat um, who you are, uh, what your business is. Because um, I definitely want to know um, who we're, who's in the chat, if we can help you with anything. Um, so we want to make this interactive. And I think we'll go ahead and get started because I want to be sensitive for your time. Um, so just uh, thank you again for joining us. Okay, so um, this webinar is focused on disaster resiliency. Obviously, we're about to be into um, the Atlantic hurricane season. Um, so we just want to thank you for joining us on the webinar. Uh, my name is Brian Van Hook, as I mentioned. And I'm sure you're like, who is this guy? What does this guy know about um, disaster preparedness, disaster recovery? Um, as the slide tells you, um, I'm a certified business continuity professional, and I have um, over um, 15 years of disaster experience. Um, it's uh, closer almost to 20 years now. Um, I've worked in the United States Senate, um, the Department of Commerce, and worked on such disasters as Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Sandy, Midwest tornadoes, the BP oil spill. I'm also here locally. Obviously, um, you know, we've had multiple hurricanes. We've had Zika, um, now the pandemic. Um, so we've had a number of disasters that we've worked with businesses on um, preparedness and recovery. And so I'm really happy to share um, some of that knowledge and information with you. So before we get started, I just wanted to tell you what a community navigator is, because this webinar is part of the um, SBA Community Navigator Program and the uh, locally the Miami-Dade um, Business Navigator Program. Um, when you think about a community navigator, you might think about like a compass or something like that, um, you know, a ship, um, but a navigator is a community-based organization that's focused on helping your local business um, to locate and access re resources, information, and services. So we're your trusted advisors, we're your advocate, we're your ambassadors. Um, as the photo shows you, we are your GPS, helping you to get to where you need to go. Um, the program was established under the American Rescue Plan Act last year. Um, it uses that community navigator approach to help small businesses with economic recovery. Um, we have a a lead kind of hub organization, which for our network is SBDC at FIU. And then we have a group of spokes organizations, which are those trusted organizations um, in the community. Um, it's a two year pilot program um, and uh, we're a tier two project. So we're um, kind of like a state and regional project. And our focus is on long-term economic recovery and as we're talking about today, resilience for businesses. Um, and we're focusing on particularly um, veterans, women, socially and economically disadvantaged individuals. In terms of our Miami-Dade Business Navigator Program, um, we have seven really great organizations that are working together collectively um, to help your business to start and grow. So it's Ascendus Branches, the EDC of South Miami-Dade, the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce, um, Prospera, Startup FIU Procurement, and also SBDC at FIU. And what we're doing is we're creating a local network of these organizations um, to basically work with your business. Um, we are specifically targeting minority-owned businesses, women-owned, veteran-owned, and LGBTQ-owned businesses um, located in Miami-Dade County. In terms of SBDC at FIU, this is our local team of consultants under Navigator, but I mentioned um, we have additional organizations that can help you as well. And then if you're a business owner, 
um, we have a call to action to you. We want to do it at the beginning of the webinar. Um, please visit our website. Go to MiamiBusinessNavigator.com. Um, you can sign up for consulting. You can see the upcoming trainings. Um, we also do link to a lot of other resources in the community. So we would encourage you to check out our website um, to get access and also follow us on social media um, because we do post upcoming events. We post um, resources and information. And every month we're in the community doing um, different trainings and different resource fairs. So please look out for that because we're looking um, to see you in the community, kind of in your neighborhood. So now let's get into disaster um, preparedness. Um, when you're looking to build a resilient business, it's a lot of different things that you have to consider. So you have to factor in risk management, contingency planning, emergency preparedness, um, disaster recovery planning, which is like IT, um, and also succession planning. Like what happens if you or one of your key employees has like a medical emergency or something else, like how are you gonna have continuity of operations? Um, the good news is you're here today. So we can give you some of those uh, tips and information. Um, also, we do have consultants that can assist you um, in um, those specific areas, whether that's training materials, a business continuity plan, a mini plan, um, you know, other types of information that you need. And I want to just lead off by talking about COVID. Um, obviously, we're still in the midst of the pandemic. Hopefully, we're on the back end of it, not the front end. And, um, you know, in the past, we would always talk about pandemics, and we would say, you don't have to worry about that. So we would work with folks on a business continuity plan, and we'd say, hey, you don't have to factor in pandemic, you know, planning. You need to focus on more cybersecurity. You need to focus on, you know, old school theft. You need to focus on, um, you know, the hurricanes and other aspects. We'd say, don't worry about pandemics. Now that we've had a pandemic, now that we're in a pandemic, um, you do have to factor that into your business continuity planning. Um, in terms of your day-to-day -day operations, um, you do want to definitely give strong consideration to e-commerce, direct-to-consumer sales. Um, we did see during the pandemic that businesses that had these sales channels, um, along with some marketing to back it up, they saw their sales continue or skyrocket, while those traditional brick-and-mortar offerings that were just waiting for people to come to them, um, they did suffer. And then also you want to consider for your marketing strategy that it's not like a one size fits all um, in terms of the different localities that you might operate. Because um, we saw that there was a number of restrictions. Um, there's some communities were open, some were um, closed um, for business. So you have to factor in some of those type of things. Um, so you wanna make sure that those marketing strategies are agile, um, that you can pivot because um, you don't wanna avoid any of those um, costs or delays in terms of kind of um, getting the marketing out. So that is one consideration that you want to factor in. Um, also, I just want to reiterate again um, how we did have like a phased reopening. So you wanted to um, kind of keep in mind and be mindful of where your particular business factors into that occupational risk pyramid, um, which was kind of like the basis for a lot of these um, kind of like phases. So like phase one was this, phase two was that. Um, so you do want to factor in whether you're a restaurant, whether you're professional services, um, whether you're like a movie theater, um, you want to factor in all those type of things because that helps you to better prepare in terms of like phase reopenings um, if we have other pandemics that come up down the road. Um, the other thing on um, COVID and pandemics is when we would talk about business continuity planning and kind of planning for a pandemic, um, we wouldn't really have like rules of the road. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't have like, what can you look at to be better prepared? Um, one of the good things coming out of COVID is now we know what the federal government's plans are. Now we know what the state of Florida plans are. Now we know what Miami-Dade County's plans are and even local plans, whether it's Miami Gardens, Hialeah, Doral. So I would encourage you um, because everybody looked at that stuff like back in 2020, but it's still available online. So I would encourage you to download um, the county's plan, which is available at the link, and we will send you a copy of this presentation. Um, would also encourage you to go to their website because they do have tips for small businesses on COVID planning, on um, COVID considerations. Um, but you definitely want to download that plan because you want to keep that 
ahead of if there is some other pandemic down the road, you actually have like the rules of the road from the last time. So you can incorporate that into your planning. And then I did include a note that whether you're in city of Miami, Miami Gardens, Coral Gables, um, each, a lot of these uh, municipalities have their own um, reopening guidance for businesses. So you also actually wanna go to their website and also get that local guidance as well. And just um, save that away in terms of like disaster materials um, so that you have that for down the road because that kind of stuff is once the pandemic goes away, um, a lot of that stuff is gonna get pulled off the websites and it'd be tougher for you to find it. So you do wanna have that saved away somewhere so you can look at it um, if we're in this situation again. So when we talk about disasters, this is what most people think. This is the Lower Ninth Ward. This is um, New Orleans. This is Hurricane Katrina. Um, this is what most uh, businesses, especially here in Florida, think about, like a large scale disaster, you know, that, you know, destroys neighborhoods, destroys the roads. Um, and that's the kind of the stuff that they plan for. But we all live in Miami-Dade. We live in South Florida. Um, this is actually like a business interruption that could really impact a business, especially if you're retail, if you're a restaurant. Uh, we have construction all the time. So this is actually something that people don't plan for. They don't plan for internet outages, power outages, um, those type of things. Those are things that with a lot of local businesses, they're very small margins. So something like that, that can impact your business for a day, for two days, for three days. Um, could really impact you and put you out of business. So these are the type of things that you need to think about um, in terms of interruptions to your business, not just like a large scale disaster, like a volcano, you know, a snowstorm. We don't have to worry about those type of things. Um, we do have to worry about hurricanes, but we want you to kind of think about things that could actually impact your business, not just like a hurricane. Um, in terms of the businesses, like I mentioned, a uh, power outage, road construction, flooding. Um, it could impact your daily operations. It could jeopardize the future of your business. So you do want to kind of make some preparations. Um, obviously in terms of disaster basics, you know, you have fires, you know, you have tornadoes, you have like um, hurricanes and things like that. Those are things that people think about. Um, so for your business, you know it better than anybody. I'm not gonna sit here and claim that I know your business better than you. Um, so you know your business, you know your employees, you know your location. So just ask yourself some basic questions. Have you done a risk assessment on what risks are more likely to threaten your business? Obviously, you don't have to worry about a, a volcano. You don't have to worry about tornadoes, um, those type of things. Have you done a basic tabletop exercise to test how you would respond to those? That could even be just getting your team around the table, you know, having a pizza, having a lunch, talking about things to think through. Um, you know, basic thing is like, when's the last time you did a visual inspection around your business? Check the roof, check the doors, check your equipment. Um, those are some really basic things you can do kind of when, uh, when the sun is out that can make you better prepared if something does happen. And then also, are there any basic steps that you can take today to better prepare your business against a future disaster? Because a lot of businesses overthink it. You think about like 500 things you have to do instead of focusing on one thing, completing it, and then focusing on another thing, kind of doing it task by task. Um, a lot of businesses only say, look, I don't need to worry about this stuff. I've got insurance. But if you've dealt with insurance, you know that insurance is not going to replace your lost customers and it's not going to cover all your losses. You know, you've seen a lot of those um you know, commercials where it's like you think you're covered for this, but you're actually only covered for that. Um, so I would encourage you to shop around for insurance. Um, you don't know what you don't know. And you could basically take advantage of free risk assessments from your insurance company that they could actually come in and it's in their best interest and they could kind of give you some potential risks, some, thing, some things you might want to take a look at. Um, so those are some things you can take advantage of in terms of your existing policy and your existing insurance company, but also you can shop around and see if you can get a better deal with another company, or maybe they might cover you for uh, more stuff. Um, also, you wanna talk to your fellow business owners, talk to them about some disaster experiences. Um, I, did they have losses that were included or excluded under the same type of policy that you have? You know, get some information from other people's um, you know, experiences that they had. Um, we're here to talk about your business, but I wanna reiterate that 
you're not going to be able to reopen your business if your personal life, if your home, if your family, if things are impacted on the home front. Um, so you want to think through for your disaster preparations, um, basic things like how are you going to get back to work if you're home, if you don't have childcare, if you're worried about relatives or pets. So you want, do want to talk with your family and your team now about the disaster plans. You want to set some deadlines when key items need to be completed. You want everybody to give you an emergency contact. You want everybody to um, kind of like think through their disaster planning. Are they going to shelter in place? Are they going to evacuate? Um, those type of things. But I really want to reiterate with you guys, don't overcomplicate your planning. Um, focus on three or four key actions and complete them within a defined time frame. Then you can move on to three or four more actions. Don't make a list of 15 things because you won't get any of them done. Just focus on three or four things that you really need to get done and set a timeline when you need to get it done. Um, in terms of disaster preparedness, um, you're here today, which is a good step. Um, I'm here to tell you that business continuity planning, it could actually be good for your business. It could give you a competitive advantage, kind of like just like the turtle in the graphic. Um, because if you're, at, if you're down or if you're out of business, your competitor could pick up the slack and basically uh, pick up your customers. Um, and also, if you're um, working with larger businesses or you're working as a federal, state, or local contractor, um, you're in their supply chain, so they want to know that preparedness is important to you. It could actually make some of your bids um, or some of the offers that you're working with larger businesses make it more competitive because you actually have business continuity as a core business value versus some of these other businesses that don't factor those in. And that those are actually are factored into... Um, some of the reviews and some of the things when um, the federal government or other businesses are reviewing uh, different bids um, so that it could, could help you out. Um, in terms of your business, just some basic stuff is what makes your business run? You know, who makes it run? Where does it run? What runs your business? How does it run? Um, you need to think through in terms of your business. What is critical operations and functions? What are important operations and functions? and what is non-essential. Because as we've all seen with COVID, with hurricanes, um, you find out what's not essential pretty quick. So you wanna think about those um, critical functions um, such as payroll, such as um, you know, communication with your customers, any kind of regulatory re uh, requirements that you might have. Um, you wanna think about how long can you withstand an interruption to those functions? Is it 24 hours? Is it two days? Is it three days? You want to basically factor in the downtime for those and how you're going to resume operations. Um, and like we said, factor it into what's critical to your business, what is not essential to your business. So you can kind of prioritize. Um, you also want to think through your supply chain. So obviously upstream, you got your suppliers. Um, obviously in the middle is you and your employees. That makes your business run. And then downstream is your customers. So you want to think through your supply chain. Um, you want to make sure, um, as the slide notes, you want to basically make sure that you have current vendor information for your suppliers, that you have primary and alternate contacts in case something happens to them um, or somebody leaves their job. Um, you want to have basic stuff like your account numbers. Um, you know, you can even ask, do they have a continuity plan? Um, are they prepared? Because that's might, something you might want to know just in case they're not prepared, they might be out of business or down if you need some um, important parts or some important um, products or something like that. It's always good to have a list of alternate suppliers just in case um, that you could go to somebody else if you're in need of some something and your supplier's down. Um, obviously, you can share any knowledge or expert experience that you have. Um, we do talk about geographic diversity because um, imagine if your supplier is here in South Florida and a hurricane comes through South Florida, you know, but maybe it doesn't impact Georgia. Maybe it doesn't impact, you know, North Carolina. Um, so you could basically have suppliers in other areas um, that would allow you to use somebody that's not um, specifically in your area. Um, and then also important is to remember to place periodic orders so that you maintain an active status with those suppliers. Because um, that you might circle back with them and they're like, you haven't ordered for, for two years. Um, you're not an act, active client with us. You know, we have to prioritize active clients. 
Um, in terms of your business, um, obviously we say that for our center and I think it's important for a lot of businesses too, but your front line is your bottom line. You can't run your business without your employees. So you wanna have um, current employee contact information. Everybody gets a new phone. Everybody gets a new email address. Um, very happily, some people get married. Um, very sad, some people get divorced. Um, so people's employee contact information will change. So you wanna update that periodically. Um, obviously have up-to-date emergency contacts. Um, nowadays, we have to use alternate means of communication. Um, that could be their personal cell phone. That could be personal email. That could be using WhatsApp. Um, there's different ways that you communicate with your employees um, versus just using your work emails. Um, obviously on your team, everybody ha has different skills, different experiences. So you wanna see if anybody has any like special skills or certifications like first aid training, CPR, military training. Um, those are things that are important um, that can come in handy like if you're in an emergency situation. Um, you want to, um, as we talked about, help your employees with, um, you wanna help your employees with any personal disaster plans, actually have them think through um, what they're gonna do. Are they gonna shelter in place? Do they have pets? What are they gonna do with the pets? Have they looked into um, shelters that have um, allow pets? Cause some of them do, some of them don't. Um, what are they gonna do for childcare if they get back? Um, a lot of those different types of considerations. Um, do you have elderly relatives or neighbors that you're taking care of? Um, those are things that are always better to think about pre-disaster instead of like when a hurricane, um, you know, is bearing down on us. You don't want to think about those type of things last minute. So have, help, help them to have a plan because it's actually going to help your business in the long run because you can get your employees back um, and help them to reopen your business. Um, in terms of your customers, one of the most important things is to identify if there is a good chance that customers are going to be present in your business. If a disaster occurs, you need to factor those type of things in. Um, you want to keep communications open. I know we've had a lot of experience with that with COVID, um, but basically your phone lines, your emails, um, your website, social media, um, you know, transferring your phones so that somebody is, is able to access it. Um, you know, updating your social media, your website, you know, if you're going to be down, um, you obviously want to monitor the internet and social media. If there's a story that is important to you or your business, maybe it's important to your um, customers too. You can share that on social media and it might get you some follows. It might get you some views. Um, you do want to keep a copy of your customer records um, in the cloud or offsite um, so that you can access that and kind of resume operations. And then um, we've all I think at some point had um, some experience during COVID in terms of alternate work sites um, where it's appropriate or where they could do it um, and different ways to communicate with customers um, during, during the pandemic. So you do wanna factor that in if there is a way that you could do um, alternate work sites. Um, I know for a lot of restaurants, what they've been able to do is to open up um, outdoor seating um, so that maybe they could, they, the inside can't be open, but they can have folks outside. So those are things that you want to think about, like other options for your business. Um, you also want to think about other contacts. So the acronym we use is BAIL, um, bankers, accountants, insurance agents, and lawyers. Those are important um, contacts in terms of a disaster. Obviously, your banker, um, if you want to circle back with them on any pending lines of credit or loans, um, your accountant to make sure your finances are in order, insurance agent, um, checking your policies in case you want to put any claims, your lawyer, um, if you have any legal obligations or any regulatory obligations, um, those type of things can be discussed with your lawyer. Um, we talked about your customer records. You want to identify any records that are vital to performing um, those critical functions we talked about. Um, you wanna store copies on site, you know, have something backed up in the cloud. Um, you wanna regularly back it up because what good are those vital records and the data if it's, if it's backed up from three months ago or a year ago, um, test those backup systems. And then nowadays we all have phones. Um, you know, we have iPads, 
So you want to have um, photographic records of your inventory, your furnishings, your fixtures, your equipment. Um, that's important for insurance claims and also for um, SBA loans. If you're applying for an SBA disaster loan, you want to be able to show that your inventory, that your um, equipment, it wasn't trashed pre-disaster. It was only impacted post-disaster. So you need to show like a before and after. Um, and so a lot of those people are just going to take a picture after. Um, but you want to show it was in good working order, um, you know, that the office was in good shape. Um, so a lot of those type of things are really good to do, especially ahead of hurricane season, um, because you can do it once a year and have it on file. Um, in terms of those critical operations, depends on your business. Um, could be administrative functions, could be payroll. Um, obviously, we talked about reg regulatory requirements. We'll get into that a little more. Um, you know, communications, physically accessing your building. Um, a lot of businesses don't think about that in terms of maybe they're in a lease space, they're renting, um, maybe they're in a commercial building, like what's the access to that building? Um, you know, I can't get back in and check my, my um, office or check my uh, particular business. So you want to think about those type of things, um, vital records, um, IT, and any kind of support systems. Those are all critical operations depending on your business. So you want to think through some of these different um, functions and see basically are these things that you need to factor in. We've talked a little bit about regulatory requirements. One of the best examples is if you work with any type of health data or health information, um, you basically are familiar with HIPAA. Um, for a lot of businesses that deal with that, it is a four letter word. Um, it provides um, protections for personal health information. Um, it lays out safeguards for any organizations to have confidentiality, integrity, um, availability of that electronically um, health protected health information. Um, if you do keep any of that data, um, you have to comply with data security and business continuity standards. Um, so you have to, uh, some of the requirements is back it up electronically, um, have a business continuity plan, provide um, emergency operations planning um, related to that um, protected health information. So that's just one example um, of something that your business, depending on your industry, could be um, in non-compliance with that regulatory requirement if you don't back up the health data, if you're not able to access it, if you lose it, um, there's some huge fines involved for that type of stuff. So you want to be very careful. You want to know your regulatory requirements and make sure that you're planning ahead um, to make sure that you're not um, out of compliance. Um, in terms of planning, it's not something you just do one time. Um, it is something that's an ongoing process. Uh, we definitely encourage you don't procrastinate. Um, that's when you're going to make mistakes or you're going to miss something. Um, I did talk about kind of doing tabletop exercises. Those are things that SBDC, we have some sample tabletop exercises that you can do with your team where you guys can just kind of work in a non-disaster um, situation and kind of go over what would you do? How would you do this? What can we improve? Um, those are things that are really good to do. And you could do it in as little as like two hours, an hour and a half, um, and just involve key personnel in the organization, um, get advice from professionals such as SBDC. Um, you can talk to your local emergency management professionals too. Um, you know, put stuff down on paper. Don't just talk about it conceptually. And then you um, wanna have some type of plan um, doesn't have to be a very comprehensive plan. I know that when we talk about a business continuity plan, businesses think it has to be like 40 to 50 pages, you know, very detailed, like very complicated. Um, there's plans that you can get that are like one page, five pages, um, very basic. So it's easy to fill out and keep up with. And it is a way just for you to have something on paper that you can work from. Um, also, what good is a plan if you don't train your employees on it? Um, so you want to make preparedness like that core business value. Um, you know, you have groups like FedEx, like UPS. Um, they're really focused on um, disaster preparedness. They're focused on, um, you know, that. And that's actually kind of like something that they are able to get it because people know that they'll be available, they'll be around if a disaster happens. Um, you want to com communicate with those vendors, um, any suppliers that you might have, and figure out if they have any good ideas. Um, you want to uh, monitor your performance on that plan and evaluate the effectiveness. 
um, and then adjust that plan and update it as you need to. And then I did want to spend a little bit of time um, to talk with you guys about some different resources and other information that's out there. Um, nowadays, we all have phones, you know, we all have uh, iPads. Um, there is a lot of really good apps that you can get. So it is kind of difficult to wade through a lot of these applications on what's best for you. I would kind of encourage you check out some of the standard ones like the Red Cross, um, FEMA. There's obviously hurricane trackers. There's emergency radio. Um, the Red Cross, they have a number of them, like first aid apps, hurricane apps, um, shelters. Um, FEMA also has different ones on maps. Um, and you can kind of put like five different locations. So let's say you have five different um, business sites. You can put those in and kind of track. Um, Hurricane Tracker is one that has hurricane related information. Um, you can access NOAA uh, weather radio. You can see maps, you can get information. Um, but there is a number of other apps that are out there. Um, and definitely it's something that can help you plan ahead. Um, in terms of just basic standard um, business planning. Um, Ready.gov is the website for the federal government. Um, they have a really good business site that has a lot of information. Um, also, we did include up there the Florida Division of Emergency Management. Um, that is the Florida website. That is kind of the catch-all for disaster info. Um, it's a good website and kind of has more Florida specific. Um, as I mentioned to you, depending on your county or your municipality, um, you can also go to Miami-Dade County. Um, they have a really good website for business continuity. Um, and then obviously each uh, municipality has their own website with specific, specific information. Um, and a lot of those websites do update with disaster information um, in terms of like outages, in terms of contact information, things like that. So those are things that you wanna access in an emergency. Um, I also did wanna factor in, we talked about COVID on the front end. Um, just mentioned about cybersecurity um, because COVID has impacted all aspects of the business. Um, and while many companies are, um, you know, back in the office or they have flex schedules, um, some of them have been allowing employees to work remote. Um, just would flag for you that that increases your cyber risks to the company and um, data breach loss for your business. Um, so we did include in the presentation, which we'll send to you guys. Um, some things that you could factor in related to virtual meetings, um, regarding telework and remote access, and also um, any current scams or cyber threats. I know that there's been a lot um, coming up recently in terms of phishing scams and things like that. So those are things that you wanna keep a track of and also let your team be aware of it. Um, Cause if they're not aware of it, they can't be your first line of defense. And then there also is a um, pretty good resources from the Cyber Florida um, Advisory Center. So I put that up there as well um, for more Florida specific information. And then if you want some um, kind of general cybersecurity contacts, um, I did include um, the FBI field office. We do have a field office here in South Florida. We also do have a secret service field office as well. Um, I put up there the email address and then also the FBI's um, complaint center. Um, if you do encounter any particular, um, you know, issues or um, have any kind of like scams or anything you want to flag, um, you can basically reach out to that via that. And then we also did include some additional resources um, regarding the F FBI cybercrime, um, InfraGuard. I put up there FishMe, which is um, a really good website to get infographics that you can post in your business. Um, to kind of make your, your employees more aware of partic uh, particular cyber um, tips or scams or things they need to be aware of. Um, so we will send you guys a PDF of this presentation so that you can access those links um, after the presentation. And then um, with that, I was gonna kind of turn it over to questions. So do any of you guys have any questions, anything that um, I didn't cover, anything that we wanna know, that we wanna, um, discuss. I saw a couple of you guys did put in the chat. Um, one, somebody has a farm. Somebody has a beauty beauty company. 
um, benefits. So yeah, give me some questions, guys. Anything we can do to um, help your business get better prepared? I'm not seeing any questions. So I would encourage you, if you do have any questions, um, please email them to Jesus after the webinar. Um, and as I mentioned, we will, we were not expecting you to take um, super detailed notes. So we will um, email you a, a PDF of this presentation after the webinar so that you can kind of look at it on your own time. And um, as Jesus noted, um, we do have a cybersecurity webinar that's coming up. Uh, June 21st from one to two o'clock. So we will dive a little bit more into cybersecurity um, for small businesses and things that you should um, be worried about. Um, and with that, I just encourage everybody start doing your planning now for hurricane season, start making your preparations in terms of, um, as we mentioned, potential business interruptions that might happen. And um, just uh, count on SBDC and the Miami-Dade uh, Business Navigator program to help you with anything else you might need. And Jesus, any kind of closing remarks? Yes, yeah, so I have a, a few questions. How often should we should we be photographing our inventory and property? Okay, that's a good question. So I would encourage you at least once a year. Um, a good time to do it is ahead of hurricane season, which is coming up. But it does not hurt if you can schedule that, either if it's on three-month increments, if it's on six-month increments. Um, but just basically kind of rinse and repeat. Schedule it where you can do it routinely and then back up those photos um, and then have them safe some, somewhere secure. And then uh, any advice for dealing with flooding? Um, in regards to flooding, um, that does kind of go under knowing your business location. Um, those are type of things where a lot of businesses know um, that their location floods. If you're renting, those are things that you should discuss with the property owner. Um, or with your landlord um, and see if there might be some things that they can help you to do to mitigate it, whether that's, um, you know, kind of elevation, like flood walls. Um, sometimes it's just basic, um, you know, sandbags, um, but those are things that you should factor in. Um, you should also factor those in when your lease is up, um, because if you have a location that uh, routinely floods and the uh, uh, landlord won't kind of make any, uh, you know, repairs, or help you to mitigate that, then that might be something you want to factor in um, if you're going to renew the lease there. I mean, it might be, might be time to look for another location. Um, but definitely in that respect, you want to check flood insurance. Um, you want to check any other type of policies you should have in place. Um, and those are the type of things too that can be factored in um, if you talk to your insurance agent. Um, they can come give you a free risk assessment. And then uh, for going solar, would that fit into continuity planning? Are there programs for that? Um, there are some programs. Um, those are things that you want to check through the um, state of Florida, um, because I know that there's some Florida specific um, information, um, but that is something that you could factor in in terms of power outages, um, is having solar power and kind of building up um, some energy in terms of the meter. Um, so that's definitely something. And then I think that there are some uh, potential loans out there um, for on the homeowner side and also on the business side. Um, so there's a couple of those um, particular programs you can check because um, I think that they do offer some loans if you're doing um, kind of like hurricane protection or um, you know going solar. Um, there are some different programs that are available. So those are pretty good questions. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's about it. And uh, once again, like what Brian was saying, uh, this webinar is being recorded. Um, we will be emailing you the presentation along with the link to register for, um, for the Community Navigator Program, along with the website and also our YouTube channel as well. So like I said, anything that we can do to address your small business needs, we're family, we're more than happy to assist you in what we can. And, um, and looking forward to seeing you at our next webinar. Brian, do you have any other questions or remarks? No, I just want to thank everybody for attending. I saw that we did have a good mix. We had some technical assistance providers, um, business owners, um, nonprofits. So I thought we had a good mix of businesses that were attending and just count on us if we can help you guys in any way. Um, we're always happy to provide additional resources. As you see, as you see um, we have more disaster preparedness resources than we know what to do with. And so we're happy to share that information to you guys so that you can be better prepared. And like the point of the day is don't overthink it guys. 
focus on some basic steps that you need to do, um, kind of critical functions, um, things that you can do to prepare your business and um, kind of focus on those, kind of rinse and repeat, focus on two to three things, finish those within a certain timeline, start on something else. Um, and then in terms of business continuity planning, there are some very basic mini plans that you can get where you don't have to do like a 50 page plan. Um, and that's at least a way for you to get started. So just um, feel free, like Jesus said, feel free to circle back and we can help you guys in any way. All right, so thank you for attending and I'll see you on our next webinar. Take care. Take care, guys.